One of the coolest parts about watching The Owl House is seeing all of the recurring background characters. Even though we don't know most of them by name, any Owl House fan can spot their favorites time and again, studying at magic school or out and about on the aisles. I'm Whitney Van Lanningham, and this is your Season 1 Hexide Yearbook. Before we get started, I want to give a shout out to our super nerd sponsor of the day, Lauren Linton, for supporting us on Patreon. Just a friendly reminder, lots of details about these students and faculty members are subject to change as we learn more about them in future seasons, but we're going to do our best to be as accurate as possible with these witches. All right, let's get these covens sorted. The Abomination Track I love the character design for the professor of this track. This teacher is short in stature with pointed features. His hands and feet both have claws, his teeth are sharp, and his eyebrows are severe. Also, that goatee could seriously rival a 90s boy band. It's not clear if he's unable to walk on his own due to a disability, or if he simply prefers to be carried. But either way, this teacher can always be found in the arms of his dutiful abomination. Actually, it would be really cool to see a disabled witch represented on the Owl House. And this show is so incredibly inclusive, it wouldn't surprise me at all if the writers chose to rep the disabled community. That being said, I don't know for sure, so I could be wrong about that. Maybe this witch is just so skilled at his track that he has an abomination at his every beck and call. Of course, the star of the Abomination track is none other than Amity Blight. The Abomination professor even gave her a gold star that says top student for her outstanding efforts in his class. Amity's abominations are better crafted than any of her peers. While the professor threatens the rest of the class with extra homework for failing their abomination assignment, he reassures Amity that he's saving her project as the best for last. It's clear that, in addition to being an exceptionally bright witch, Amity simply practices more than her other classmates. While her friends are obsessing over their pentagrams, Amity is out on the aisles training every chance she gets. As the season progresses, her abomination magic gets stronger and stronger. Each time we see her with her creature, it's more advanced. Like on Luz's official first day, when she controls her abomination to mirror her every movement and high-fives Luz in the face. Or when Lumity fights the Grimethius and she conjures a gigantic battle abomination. Sadly, this girl with horns and purple hair doesn't have the same mad skills as Amity. Her abomination had way too many toenails. Gross. This yellow spiky-headed guy is also on the abomination track, but we haven't seen his work in action yet. If Amity was going last in the class, he had to either have gone before the purple-haired girl with the toenail abomination or after Willow. We do know that he really needed to hear King's little pep talk about having a great day because he thanks him, even though the sentiment wasn't actually directed at him. Hopefully we'll find out what he's made of in later episodes. The Potions Track The Potions Track professor is a bird-like creature with glasses, a beret, and a Peter Pan collar. She gets super freaked out when Barkus tries to mix oracle magic with potions and accidentally reveals to her what she'll look like if her face melts off. First up, we have Basha, Amity's former BFF and the captain of the Grudgeby team. If there's a popular jock who can do no wrong at Hexide, it's your girl Basha. She's so good at sports that she can literally get away with murder from her professors. That being said, she's pretty intelligent. You can't just hang out with Amity without being the top witch in your field. Dana Terrace even confirmed in an interview that Amity and Basha's moms are still in fierce competition with each other, even after graduating. So my guess is that we're about to see Basha step it up with her potions making next season. Basha is also secretly a pro giant rat worm racer. She totally kicks King's butt on Dead Man's Curve in the Body Swap app. We also have Eileen, the eyeball head girl in the potions track. She has dark turquoise hair and a giant magenta eyeball. Although she's still a student at Hexide, she appeared at the Cooking Coven's booth at Covention, so it's clear that she's a chef of some kind. Actually, besides making elixirs for desperate cursed witches, joining a coven that specializes in baking or cooking seems like a solid career choice. Everyone's gotta eat, even Bellos. That kind of skill set will go a long way when the revolution begins. Eileen is also a fan of hot, steamy romance novels, and she's an active member of the Human Appreciation Society. This character's name hasn't been said yet, but King does nickname him Fangs in episode 13 when he acts as substitute teacher at Hexide for the day. So let's just call him that. Fangs is green with spiky tipped dreads and sharp teeth. He's respectful and polite to authority and seems excited to learn. In the convention episode, we see him flying a broomstick across the convention center. Also on the potions track and in King's class is this blue guy with two eyeballs stacked vertically on top of one another. This guy from the potions track isn't the brightest. He and Skara were throwing squid potion water balloons at unsuspecting witches in the body swap episode, but he accidentally drops one on his own head. He has four cat-like eyes and a septum piercing, 
and he's part of the gang that wears matching red batwing boots and hangs out in the treasure shack. The Bard Track Skara is the third most popular girl at Hexide after Amity and Basha, and she's studying the Bard Track. When Amity and Skara were kids, Mr. and Mrs. Blight selected Skara to befriend their daughter because she came from a good family. Amity protested at the time that Skara was mean to her, but her parents insisted she drop Willow and replace her with a more reputable witch friend. Although she was apparently not very nice when she was younger, Skara seems a lot more compassionate than Basha, and even Amity at some times. When the group makes fun of Willow, she joins in on the teasing but thoughtfully asks Amity if they used to be friends. Amity shuts her down, but it's clear that Skara has empathy for the situation between her and Willow. She also congratulates Luz and Willow when they almost beat Basha at Grudgeby, so I think that there's hope for her character to be on the good side. That being said, Skara is still part of the popular crowd, so when she throws a 15th birthday party for herself, the invite list is extremely elitist and exclusive. This just seems to be the way that she, Amity, and Basha were raised, but I'm interested to see if Skara will also turn against her friend and grudgeby teammate like Amity has. Skara is also dating a witch from the Beastkeeping track and goes to ground with him. In the Covention episode, Skara is seen inspecting the Stylist Coven and the Pros Coven, both of which seem like cool career options for a bard tracker. She can be a badass writer who does all of her own hair, makeup, and fashion styling. We don't see whether she chooses one or the other, but hopefully her focus of study will become clear in later seasons. Another Bard Track student is this Cyclops Goat Unicorn. We see her for the first time in history class in episode 3, but later we find out that she's also a member of Gus's Human Appreciation Society. In Viney's flashback of her failed attempt at convincing Bump to let her merge beast keeping and healing, she and her lab assistant Puddles are seen tending to this one-eyed cutie. I didn't get a great look at this bard student until episode 18, but she's honestly one of my favorites. This cute little pink bat-faced girl is a mystery besides her red uniform, and I hope we get to know her character better in future apps. Also, we only see him in his bard uniform for a split second before the dance starts, but this blue unicorn cyclops is one of the openly gay students at Hexide. He's dating the white guy with reddish-brown hair from the oracle track, and they're seen dancing together at Grom. We meet the professor for the Oracle Track on Luz's first real day at Hexide, when she and the detention gang spy on her class from one of their secret shortcut doors. She's a goat with soothsayer abilities. They watch her show the class how to make a classic cootie catcher while she talks about predicting death, which is so cool and morbid. When the greater basilisk attacks, she tries to take it down with a spell, but the basilisk gobbles it up and steals her power. Don't worry, she gets it back later when the troublemakers do the Heimlich on the Basilisk and get her to barf up everyone's powers. Hands down, the coolest Oracle Track student is Celine, aka Bow Girl, aka the girl with the moon-shaped head. This chick can conjure a glowing haunted mummy ghost to fight her battles. Luz is able to communicate with one of those apparitions when she tries to read her own fortune on her first real day of school, but Celine has a real mastery over it. Ugh, I can't wait to find out more about what those Oracle mummies mean. She also dances with Mytholomew at Grom. This stoner dude is also on the Oracle track. His whole hair and hat situation kind of reminds me of Sid from Hey Arnold, but bushier and blonde, obviously. He uses his red batwing boots to help him do air sit-ups, so maybe he's also an athlete like Basha and Skara. He's one of Basha's lackeys that also hangs out in the treasure shack. He's the first to say that Luz is cool after King, inside Luz's body, terrorizes the town with squid water balloons. I'm not sure how this ties in with oracle magic, but dude has some serious skills when it comes to rearranging people's faces. Next up, we have this yellow beak-faced witch. Personally, I think he has a crush on Willow. Once she gets her confidence back after standing up to Amity, this dude cheers her on every chance he gets. Whether it's in class, when she answers a question correctly, or when she's tearing it up on the grudgeby field. TBH, I'm totally shipping them. He and the normal-looking beastkeeping witch team up to torment the ugnot-looking beastkeeping witch, so we know he has a troublemaker side as well. This reddish-brown-haired witch looks like your average white dude, but with pointy witch ears. He's one of the other gay students at Hexide, and is seen at Grom dancing with a blue unicorn cyclops. We also see him a few times on the class field trip to the Emperor's Castle. This oracle track witch tried to recruit King to the fortune teller coven by gifting him a free pen from her booth. I haven't actually seen this girl in the halls of Hexide, so let me know if you guys have spotted her there. The Plant Track Obviously, the most powerful Plant Track student at Hexide is Willow Park. I actually think she's an even stronger witch than Amity once she's placed on the right track. While Baby Girl was terrible at abomination magic, her plant magic is unparalleled. Without an ounce of proper training, 
Willow is able to take a single seed from Luz's pocket and destroy the entire school's defense systems, including Amity's abominations. Even Principal Bump is so impressed by her display of strength and talent that he transfers her to the plant track immediately. Willow doubts herself sometimes, but it's only because Amity made her feel lesser than for developing her powers later on in her childhood. But seriously, dude, that extra time cooking her powers must have made a huge difference. Without Amity making fun of her, and with Luz's support, she even manages to save herself and her friends from certain death. When they're thrown off the side of a cliff, Willow simply reaches for a nearby vine, pulls herself and her friends up, and takes down all the bad guys. What? Willow did that with minimal magic training, and Amity couldn't even make her abomination fight on her behalf until way later in the season. And although the power of friendship is strong, I think Gus and Luz owe their Moonlight Conjuring success all to Willow. Gus is super smart for his age, but he's been on the illusionist track for a while. Willow just transferred to the plant track, and she's already kicking this much ass. Luz is clearly still developing her rudimentary glyph spells, so in my opinion, they would have never been able to animate the entire Owl House without Willow's strength. Only other plant magic girl we really get to know is Amelia, another one of the popular girls. She's in the Treasure Shack gang, as well as the group of friends that meets up Light Manor for the Moonlight Conjuring. In the Body Swap episode, Amelia changes a self-storage sign to read Elf Rage as a prank, and is clearly a huge fan of Boiling Isles brand Funyuns. Like seriously, she has an entire armful of onion chips, and even uses one in place of a starting gun at Boshang King's Ratworm Drag Race. The Construction Track Although the construction track is one of the most powerful, and known to be Dana Terrace's favorite, Matholomew is the only student we really get to know in depth this season. We first meet him at convention, when Principal Bump asks the crowd what the highest achievement in magic is. Matholomew responds by enlarging his own head and toppling over into the kid next to him. He can also be seen flying on a broomstick in that episode. Matholomew is another member of the Human Appreciation Society. He tries to take the presidency away from Gus by presenting fake artifacts to the club and challenging Gus's authority. When Luz is about to expose his lies, he admits that he pretended to know so much about humans because he was trying to fit in. He gives this whole sob story about being the new kid in school and just wanting everyone to like him. Gus, Luz, and the rest of the HAS forgive him, but Matholomew had already ratted out Luz and Gus to the trouble sniffers. Ugh, not cool, Matholomew. Snitches get stitches, fool. I'd be careful about who you mess with at Hexide. He can be seen grooving on the dance floor with Celine at Grom. The Illusionist Track The Illusionist Track professor is a purple three-eyed monster with visible fangs, forehead horns, and dark purple hair. We see her in episode 9 when Gus takes Luz for an unofficial tour of Hexide. Edric and Emera are the school's top Illusionist students. What else would you expect from the Blight family? Although they aren't nearly as hardworking as Amity, they're clearly very bright and obviously the kind of witches that don't need to study hard to get good grades. Ed and Em are more interested in playing teasing pranks on their sister, her friends, and their other classmates. Edric is more attached to Emera than Emera is to him, however, as we learn in the Ground Fright episode when they discuss their deepest fears. Gus comes in hot on their heels as the third strongest illusionist student, however. Even though he's only 12, Gus has skipped a few grades and can cast apparitions with the best of them. Although Gus is known to make silly slip-ups here and there, like with his better luck next time signs that he made for Luz after her entrance exam, he's extremely advanced. Not only can he make an illusion of himself to sit in on boring classes for him, he can also hold the illusions of two of his friends. When Luz, Willow, and Gus sneak off during their field trip to the Emperor's castle, Gus manages to cast three illusions to replace himself and his friends on the group tour. Maintaining that many illusions at once has to take incredible strength, and I think we're going to see more of Gus's talents in action in season 2. This poor redheaded girl kinda sucks at illusion magic. She disappears her own face in class and the teacher has to rescue her so that she doesn't suffocate to death. Hopefully she'll get better in future episodes, cause baby girl seems like she needs to go back to the baby classes. The infamous dark blue haired guy who gets his power zapped at convention is also from the illusionist track. This kid must be graduating soon, because students don't normally pledge their undying allegiance to a coven until they're close to leaving school. The dude who zaps his powers away is a baby blue, swirly-haired illusionist. He's friends with this purple-haired illusionist girl whose head is just a giant, open, toothy mouth, and the two of them operate the booth at Covention. The mouth-head girl is dating the regular-looking, beast-keeping guy. The Healer Track So far, we've only met two Healer Track students at Hexide, Bo and Kat. 
Both of them are in the popular circle, but I think Kat might be a little bit more popular than Bo. She was invited to the Moonlight Conjuring, after all. Kat has tan skin, brown wavy hair, and glasses. Bo seems to float around socially, spending time with Eileen in the Human Appreciation Society and teaching Scar to turn fireballs into snow. She has fair skin, freckles, and straight brown hair. The Beast Keeping Track Is it just me, or does this Beast Keeping student look a little bit like an Ugnaught from Star Wars? I keep half expecting him to say, I have spoken. The first time we see him, Amity almost backs up into him while she's walking away from Luz and Willow. He later gets picked on by the beak-faced Oracle Witch and the normal-looking Beast Keeping Witch. They levitate his backpack and play keep away with it. If you're wondering who I keep referring to as the normal-looking guy, it's this kid. He just looks like an average dude with a bowl cut, so I don't know what else to call him. This dude pops up everywhere and seems to be a bit of a bully. In the Ground Fright episode, we see him with his arm around the purple-haired illusionist girl with an open mouth at the top of her noggin. Then we have this dude with olive skin, shaggy blonde hair, and bat-like ears. You gotta hand it to this kid. He comes up with a great, dramatic gromposal to ask Skara to be his date. The Detention Track, aka Multiple Magic Tracks. Don't be fooled just because all these so-called troublemakers are all on the detention track. Viney, Jerbo, and Barkus are some of the most talented witches at Hexide. Like Luz, none of them could commit to studying just one magical subject, so they tried to create their own majors. Viney is on the beast keeping and healing track, which makes so much sense to me. I have no idea why these covens were even separated in the first place. Don't you need healer knowledge to be able to care for magical creatures? Viney's lab assistant is a griffin named Petals. Like the rest of the detention trackers, she's studious and hardworking, in addition to being a rule breaker. Viney is kind of the leader of the detention gang. She's the first person to welcome Luz into their ranks and seems to be the most trusting and easygoing of the trio. Jerbo isn't as trusting at first, but slowly warms up to Luz. He's also a pretty regular looking guy with brown hair and brown eyes, but his brand of magic is especially unique. Jerbo does a mashup of plant and abomination magic and can even create abominations from soil instead of their usual mucky liquid. Barkus is a brown dog with a human-like face, a gold hoop earring, and square glasses. Although he can't speak English, he can read other witches' auras to determine what kind of person they are. Barkus is on the oracle and potion tracks, so his skills include future predicting, palm reading, and potions that reveal your body's eventual death and decay. I know that the aura reading is supposed to be an oracle track characteristic, but it's also the characteristic of a very good boy, and he is part dog, so I think it works. Lastly, we have Luz the Human, the ultimate Hexide magic track rebel. Going farther than Lord Calamity ever did, Luz helps Bump see the value in allowing students to study multiple forms of magic. Our girl gets to study a little bit of everything, just like bad girl Ida wanted to when she was in school. She truly gets the most out of her education of any of the other students in school. And when it comes time to face down the Emperor's Coven, she'll be a jack of all tracks. The professor who presides over the detention track is a blue monster with six eyeballs, white hair, and a white mustache. This dude does not care about educating his students and could probably sleep through a pixie infestation. Also, I want to mention the snake history professor, but I'm not sure if he's affiliated with any specific track. His character design kind of reminds me of Sir Hiss from Disney's Robin Hood. They're both yellow and they both wear those weird puffy hats. The baby classes. Where do you go when you're not quite ready to become a fully fledged witch? The baby classes, of course. We see the full class and its teacher for the first time when Ida spies on them blindly repeating what they've learned in school. The baby class teacher is a four-armed, four-eyed, two-pincered spider lady. Honestly, if she was my preschool teacher, I'd be terrified. But these kids have definitely all seen scarier. Out of all these young students, we only know two of their names, Braxis and the Usurper. Braxis seems to be the same kind of demon as Warden Wrath. He's bright red, and most of his face is made up of large teeth. He has an extremely deep voice, as heard when Amity is reading books at the library. The Usurper is a tan-skinned, red-headed witch with a perpetually runny nose. He's the one that King fights for dominion over the playground. Also in the baby class are a green cyclops with one sharp fang, a girl with blonde space buns and a unibrow, a three-eyed bird baby similar in appearance to the potions track professor, a shaggy-eared, red-eyed rabbit girl with pointed teeth, a purple-haired boy with purple eyes, and a blue ram with white horns. It's unclear which tracks they'll gravitate towards, but I'm sure we'll see more of them next season. These are all the Hexide students I spotted in season one of The Owl House, but I want to know who I missed in the comments. There are so many background characters, so if I left out any important information, 
hit me up and tell me what the fans need to know. Like and subscribe to Nerdwire and stay tuned for more Owl House videos. Hoot hoot!